J. Bernie Crumb Stadium in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Twin County Cable Force Sports presents East Bend Conference Football. Tonight's matchup features the Golden Hawks of Bethlehem Catholic. They come into this football game with a 9-1 record, coached by Bob Stem. Bob is in his 11th year as the head coach. They'll take on the Central Catholic Vikings, coached by Jim Morgans. Jim is in his fourth year as the head coach and his second stint as the head coach at Central Catholic. They have an unblemished, perfect 10-0 record coming into tonight's football game. Hello, everybody. I'm Gary Laubach, along with Dick Tracy. And who know, every weekend, it appears we have rain. We have rain here tonight for what is a big, big football game to decide the East Penn Conference Championship. Central, as we said, undefeated coming in. The last time that happened, 1982. And what an oddity, Dick. The quarterback that night was a young man named Dan Kendra. Kendra but he was on the other side of the street, huh? Yeah, he's, <laughs> his son, Danny, is quarterbacking Becca High tonight. Uh, names like Jeff McGeehan are familiar to the last team to go undefeated for Central Catholic. But Becca High brings some tradition of their own into this football game. Two state titles, five district titles, and three East Penn Conference titles coming in. Dick, they certainly have been here in this kind of a position before. Becca High thrives on this kind of pressure. Yeah, I think one thing that's very monumental and going partly unnoticed is the fact that Bob Stam could own the best coaching record of an individual East Penn school with his 106 tonight. I think Bob Shriver at 105. While we're talking about Bob Stem, I did talk to him tonight about any retirement plans, whether it's a rumor, not a rumor. He said, talk to me at the end of the season, and he said, I'll give you an answer then. So leaving that question up in the air, he certainly doesn't want to detract from tonight's big football game. What does it mean? It's a matchup of two great teams. One, the best team on offense, Central Catholic Dick, averaging 38 points a game, over 300 yards rushing. They can certainly do it on the ground. They may have to do that tonight under these conditions. Yeah, it, it, has, it has not turned up bombing the way it was contemplated, Gary. And I think right now, at this point, the rain is a real factor. So you're talking about a Delgado. You're talking about a Rashawn Drayton who are able to break the holes continuously as they have for the entire year. Well, the defensive stats say no, that they won't be able to do that against a Becca front that is not giving up many, many points. In fact, they're first in East Penn Conference in rushing defense. They are that, and they're not bad offensively either with the football. They are number two rushing the football as they're averaging 232 yards a ball game. Not too bad offensively either at 28 points a game. Dick, you would think we're going to have a high-scoring affair here, but the weather may certainly uh, take some of the options away from these two teams. It may not be as high-scoring as we thought. Weather will really be a factor, Gary. I would not be surprised if the quarterback becomes a dominant runner tonight because simply there'll be less handling of the ball. He knows what he's going to do. Is he going to cut it up? Is he going to pitch or whatever he's going to do? Because the footing is treacherous. We're only on the sideline, mm -hmm. and already we're slipping all over the place. Let's take a look at the Bethlehem Catholic receivers and their offensive backfield. And this is a team that's laden with talent. Kendra, Bell, Brandon, Brady, Flores, and Kreeshock at tight end may be a key. They haven't had him all year long. A shoulder injury. Pat is back. Danny Kendra likes to throw to him. And Kreeshock can block and play defense. Pat Kreshak gives them the element that Dave Lysick gave them at tight end. Big target, a uh, very reliable, dependable player, another two-way performer. Back from a shoulder injury, he will certainly add. But I think the key player is Brian Baker. How fit will Brian Baker be? You're talking about a kid who did just about everything last year. Returned punts, returned kickoffs, ball handling, and he is one sprinter. He gives the extra dimension of speed in the backfield the way Central Catholic has it with their twins. We also have a 1,000-yard watch, much like we did last night with Jason Brader, needing 108 yards coming into this ball game for 1,000 yards on the season, is the sophomore, Lee Brandon. Dick, he's had an outstanding year and probably came into the season thinking he wouldn't play much at all. Yeah, ready to, ready to don the JV uniform, you know, and resort to the JV after-school schedule. Called into service, went out, number one, Baker goes, number two, Jason Ramos goes, and the kid is thrown in, into that service, and he has performed admirably. He has one big stride, Gary. He has an immense stride. He's a very leggy sophomore. He's over six foot, doesn't mind a hit. We, call, of course, also have a great backfield and receivers in the Central Catholic lineup. Let's take a look at those guys. And Nick, one of the reasons they have been so good this year is because they've been so healthy. These guys have stayed together all year long with none of them missing a football game. Yeah, when you can go through the length of a season, you're talking mid-August, through mid-November without having key injuries, surgery, and things like that. You know, everybody has the nicks and the scrapes and the bruises. 
but this team has gone relatively free and thus stayed intact. That's why that defense impresses me so, Gary. You know, they're not really big and bulky, but boy, do they hit. And it's because they know somebody's there to pick it up in case they miss. We have a 1,000-yard watch with the Central Catholic Vikings when they have the ball, needing 96 yards coming into the ball game. Jose Delgado, they also have a great runner in Rashawn Drayton. He's at 787 yards coming into tonight's game. Dick, you would think that perhaps the balance that Central has giving it to Drayton or Delgado, will that be more than Becca perhaps can handle? I, I, don't, I don't think so. I think a lot's going to depend on Kramer. It's going to come down to the senior veteran. Gary, I think there are two very big keys. Number one, I say, I question, how come Central gave up 75 points in its last three games? That's a big mystery mm -hmm. to me. Number two, that was the real Cramsey last week with four aerials, you know, going over 40 touchdowns passed for his career, and they really, really let him loose because if he throws the short little stuff, you'll get away with it a night like this. He certainly will, and of course, Dan Kendra, an outstanding quarterback, too. It's just a terrific heavyweight matchup coming here into this ball game tonight. The stakes, well, next week there's a district championship on the line. It does not appear at the moment that these two teams will meet each other next week. Talking to Bob Stem, he told me if he wins this football game tonight, they're going to go Eastern Conference, which they now have the opportunity to do. And in fact, later on in tonight's ball game, we're going to call, co talk to the coach of Berwick High School, George Curry, about the possibilities of who he will play. Becca is ser seriously one of those possibilities. If Central wins the game tonight, Dick, they would have the option to go Eastern Conference or Districts. I'm not quite sure what their decision is going to be, but I don't think these two teams are going to see each other again. So when the game's over, don't go home. <laughs> Stick around because there's some important decisions to be made. Call up Bob Clark. Tell him to unpack all those uniforms he put away because he might be playing next weekend. Well, Monday morning's paper, I guess, will clear everything up. But for now, these two teams are battling for pride. These two teams are battling for the East Penn Conference Championship. Easton, probably for the first time in their life, rooting for Bethlehem Catholic tonight, hoping that they too can get a part of that East Penn Conference Championship. It should be a whale of a game, and the weather sort of fits the uh, wording, I guess, as it is very, very wet. Kickoff coming your way right after this timeout. Bob, what's wrong with you? Nothing. Today's my birthday. I had a couple of drinks, and now I'm going to drive home. Well, you can't drive in that condition, don't you know? You're not a lot to drive and drink. Well, I'm perfectly all right. There's nothing wrong with me. You trust me to get my truck and haul you home. Ah, you're making something out of nothing. Just remember what I always say. What? Don't be a dumb bunny. Get home safe to your honey. Oh, boy. From everyone at ABE Car Care, please, don't drink and drive. <laughs> Let's go get yacht gold. You know it's always been the best. Let's go get yacht gold. The quality that beats the rest. They got cheesesteaks, french fries. The famous Yako hot dog is known worldwide. Let's go get yacht gold. The secret sauce is one of a kind. Yako's an Allentown tradition. We've been searching for treasures, the movie treasures you want to see. From the Far East to the Wild West, from the dark side to the lighter side, off the map and off the wall. Whatever you're looking for in movies, your search has ended, because we've already found them. The best movie treasures are right here on Cinemax. So call now and discover Cinemax, the best network for movies on cable. Jay Bernie Crump Stadium. The teams are coming out on the field for this big, big night of football here in the Lehigh Valley. A very interested spectator in tonight's game is George Curry, the head football coach at Berwick High School. 23 years as the head coach, two state championships, two mythical state championships, and George nationally ranked this year, undefeated again. It seems to be old hat for you, but I think you're here tonight because you might see one of these teams maybe next week. You're, you're exactly right. Uh, we may even see both of them if we're fortunate enough, but uh, we just wanted, we heard a lot about both teams and, and we played Bethlehem Catholic. It's a great program and of course now Central Catholic has really picked it up in the last couple of years. And they're one of the state powers and it should be a heck of a game. We just watched them warm up and I'll tell you one thing, just looking at them 
you know, immediately, just an immediate look. Our defense is about one half of their size. I mean, we don't have a, my nose guard's about 155, my, my tackle's about 175, our linebackers are 170. I said, oh my God, when I looked at that Central Catholic, and a Bethlehem Catholic line, we don't, we, that's, they're, they're huge. <laughs> well, anybody knows anything about Berwick football, I'm sure is feeling very sorry for you right now because you <laughs> always put that 175 pounder out there who just plays a fabulous football game. George, have you ever stopped to think how uh, you might do in the East Penn Conference if you brought your football team down here against some of these teams? Do you think uh, your program will be just as successful as it is where you are now? Well, you know, you got, it's hard to say because, uh, I mean, we've played teams down here. We've played Deeriff in 80 and 81, and I think they won the league down here twice. And we've, you know, we've fared out pretty well against them. We played uh, the one game against Bethlehem Catholic, and that was one of our younger teams. Uh, Ron Pallas and, uh, was a 10th grader at that time. We had That team then was similar to our team now. Right now, I only have one senior starting on offense. This is the youngest. Yeah, this was supposed to be a rebuilding year oh, for yeah, you. Oh, yeah, we're really, we're really young. I mean, I'm telling you, the fact, I mean, this is one of the youngest football teams I've ever been around in not only my 23 years at Berwick, but my four years at Lake Lehman. It's a young football team. Now, we know you've had a, uh, a major injury to your football team in the last two weeks, and that was to your quarterback, Pecorelli. But, uh, again, the report we get is that you have a, a great sophomore who uh, has stepped in and, and probably will do uh, almost as adequate a job. He's doing a job. He's a great athlete. He's going to be a big timer someday, and he, he's, a, he's a youngster. His mother drops him off. The kid doesn't even drive yet. I mean, it's our fullback's a 10th grader. Our, our, our tailback is a, he had 400 yard games in a row now. He's a 10th grader. You know, he rides his bicycle to practice. I mean, it's just a really young football team. I'm starting four sophomores in the backfield. Flanker back, tailback, fullback, and quarterback. And our offensive line has one senior. So we're very happy with our team and progress to be 11 and 0 at this point. It is George, one final question. Uh, recently you were on Nightline, nationally known. Are your kids as aware of Berwick football as the whole nation seems to be? Do they feel uh -huh. that kind of pressure, or is it just a bunch of high school kids coming out every week to play a good high school football game? That's what it is. We don't, we're a highly visible team. And we don't know why, to, why us, but we're, we're fortunate, or I guess we're lucky in, in, in a sense, but uh, we take that in stride, and our kids handle that pretty good. You know, it's there's always cameras in your face. There's always TV people around. And, you know, those two USA Today national titles had a lot to do with it. And you know yourself, that's luck. And that could be uh -huh. anybody. We're just fortunate. Okay, George, we thank you very much. Uh, I'll just let you know that Bob Stem said that he can't wait to play Berwick. He wants I'm to play sure. the best team in the state. He always gets me when we're sophomores. So All I'll right. <laughs> thank you, George Curry, for stopping by. Our first half tonight is brought to you by Rarick Dodge in Bath. The Dodge Dakota is the roomiest midsize pickup on the market today. And you can find a great selection of Dakotas at Rarick Dodge in Bath. The Dodge Dakota is available in both two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive models. Regular cabs and club cabs with a choice of four-cylinder, six-cylinder, or eight-cylinder engines. Select the Dodge Dakota pickup that's right for you at Rarick Dodge, located just minutes north of Route 22 on Route 512 in Bath. For a clean deal, come to Bath, come to Rarick Dodge. And Dick, it looks like the weather has cleared up a little bit. The field is certainly going to be sloppy, but I think these two teams are ready to play a tough, hard-nosed football game, and what better way to play this kind of game than in the mud, get good and dirty. Yeah, I just liked your third guy in the ring. <laughs> Boy, it's nice to step in. What shoes to fill, huh? Boy, he, he knowledgeable, knows what he's talking about, and... I don't know, he just, he, he reads with a little bit of Lombardi, a little bit of Rockney, and a few other ingredients thrown in there. R.J. Robbins is set to kick the ball off for Central Catholic. We're just about ready to start tonight's big, big football game, and he approaches the ball, and there it is. It's a low kick that will roll along the ground and get picked up at around the 19-yard line. Coming up the middle with it for Becca and breaking out into the open is number 21, Rob Flores, and Flores gets the ball all the way up to the Bethlehem Catholic. 41-yard line, where Becca High will put it in play, first and 10. Another look, Dick. Well, again, you get that snap decision, Gary. Is that leg down? Isn't that leg down? The defense has to taste just one instant, and that's when a hole opens up. In the backfield, at quarterback 22, Dan Kendra. The fullback is Jason Bell, 33. The tailback is Lee Brandon, number 17. We'll watch Brandon all night long. He needs 108 yards for 1,000 yards rushing in tonight's, in this year's season. It's going to be Kendra. He's going to keep the football and look and fire down the sideline. He has Flores open. Rob Flores makes the catch, and he makes that catch at the 32-yard line, a pickup of 27 yards and a first down. From his wing back spot, you'll see it, Gary. Man in the slot goes deep, takes him over the middle, and he is wide, wide open. 
And already we see the slippery, slippery turf getting excellent in action. Pretty nice catch there by Flory. Okay, I think that was Flaherty on the kickoff, 31. Okay, it was uh, Jim Flaherty. It was 31, a 5'860 pound junior. 21st catch of the season by Flores. He adds 27 yards to his 448 coming in. So he has 475 on the season, averaging 22.4 yards a catch. Handoff, first man through is Brandon. Brandon gets stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe he got a yard as he fell forward. Making the tackle for Central is Jeremy Wells, a 6'1", 195-pound senior. We'll give him about a half a yard on the play and call it second and nine. Hawks let him know immediately, Gary, coming out with a big bomb on the first play. And it was just a great pattern. Uh, a, sp a split man, a slot man went down and just cleared out a whole area. And Flores just sort of loafed down, then put on the afterburner. That was a big gainer. Scoreboard gives them no yardage. We'll call it second and 10 and keep the ball on the 32-yard line. Kendra keeps the ball, runs the option. Pitches it to Brandon. Brandon's getting chased and run down. What a great tackle by Joe Nall. The 6'2", 200-pound junior came across to make that hit. We talked to Bob Stem about the keys to tonight's game. The first answer is kind of a funny poke at Dick about something he said earlier in the season, and then he'll give you the honest answer. Here we go. Well, I think one of the keys is if the wetness and the coldness is going to add to the dampness. I think I heard that one said on <laughs> Twin County, so I thought maybe that could be a key tonight. I'm not sure. Now, one of the keys tonight to tonight's game is um, the fact that we got to control the ball. You know, we're going to have to move the ball on, and we're going to have to play good, disciplined defense. We have to make keys. We're not, you know, they have a lot of misdirection plays. And if we look in the backfield, we're going to be fooled like everybody else has been all year long. <laughs> I expect us to get fooled sometimes, but not all the time. You know, we're going to have to be disciplined and try to stay in there and do our keys. On a third and ten, Harold Faircloud comes in and hits. Dan Kendra forces a fumble, and Central Catholic has the football. First and ten on their own 35-yard line. A big turnover early. Great pressure that time, Gary. Kept him in the pocket, stepped up in the pocket, and there was a whole wall to greet him. Excellent coverage downfield through that time. From the 35-yard line, at quarterback is Tim Cramsey. His backfield, of course, is Delgado and Drayton and Fogarty. We're going to get another look at the fumble right now. Watch the interior pressure. I think it's Fairclough that comes up the gut, and he makes the, the hit. No gain on the play. It'll bring up a second and 10 for Central. Dick, it's been tough to rush the football so far in this ball game. Delgado was the ball carrier. Resetting is Drayton. Drayton and Delgado behind Cramsey. Getting the ball this time is Drayton, and Drayton is hit by number 22, Dan Kendra, who was an outstanding defensive player, along with Jason Bell, and a gain of two. I've heard a few coaches, uh, Gary, refer to Jason Bell's best linebacker in East Penn Conference. Really playing good football, and of course, doubling up at fullback. Third, and we'll call it nine to go. The ball just over the 36-yard line. The shuffle time yet, Gary? Shovel pass Might time. be a good time for it. That's a play that works very well. I'm sure Bob Stem has got his defense well aware of the shovel pass. Good crowd on hand here despite the weather. The umbrellas are up. It's still misting. Inside handoff to Drayton. And again, Dick, it's all misdirection. And, sent, and Becca plays it very, very well. Secondary stayed home, pulled the key and guard. And the reaction of the linebackers and the left defensive side of the Hawks... Uh, just cough that up for about three. It's going to be a punting situation. Each team's trading punts here. Well, fumble uh, turnover by the backup, but uh, Central's forced to punt on their first possession. Mike Tachi made that tackle, and it will be Central to punt the ball away from their own 39-yard line. The Central punter is Jimmy Groller. Groller bobbles it <laughs> and then steps forward and punts it anyway, and it does take a Central roll and will be whistled dead out of bounds at the... 33-yard line. The punt was 28 yards. One of the twin returners deep was Kendra. Gary, yeah, that's very, very interesting. We'll take another look at the play and uh, watch Roller here almost catastrophic. <laughs> Frankie D'Angelo almost called that a walk. <laughs> He'll be calling that a walk in about a month. Hey, we want to say hi to his dad, recovering from heart surgery. Uh, how you feeling, Dad? Just let me watch the Irish. That's all he all said. Right. So well, then he had a good day. Mr. Dominic D'Angelo, 
quite a guy. Flores out wide to the right side along with Brady in the slot. And Kendra looks over the defense. Kendra hands the ball off to Brandon, and Brandon picks him up and lays him down. Brandon has close to 10 yards on the play before being tackled by Nate Davidson. Number 23, we'll see where the officials mark it, and we'll see whether or not they award a first down. They will not. It'll be a gain of nine, and it'll be second and one. We said Lee Brandon, he is that high stepping type. Uh, he can really pick him up and lay it down at that long stride. He's very deceiving as a tailback. From the 43, make it the 42-yard line. They have to get to the 43 for a first down. Brandon again puts his head down. He cannot fall forward, however, as the central defense stands him up. Fairclough is in there to finish him off. On the bottom of the pile is Jeremy Wells, number 60. Fairclough comes in at 5'9", 210 pounds. Wells at 6'1", 195. It is good enough, however, for a couple of yards and the second first down of the ball game for Becca. Brandon coming in, 130 carries, Gary, 892 yards, seven touchdowns. Those are pretty good soft numbers. Ball on the 44-yard line. Brandon on the night has 12 yards on three carries. Flores, one-on-one -on -one coverage wise. Flores, the leading receiver. Inside Brandon again. Brandon this time runs right into Todd Worley. Worley, a big kid at 6'2", 245. And Brandon is not going to move Worley. And Worley makes the hit, not before Brandon falls forward to the 46-yard line. He'll get two yards, second and eight. When you run that cross buck, sir, you, you've got to hold your blocks at the line of scrimmage, Gary. Vikes were able to shed him and meet him at the line of scrimmage. If one of these teams goes Eastern Conference next week, as they imply they might do, uh, it looks like Mount Carmel may come into the picture, Dick, in terms of district playoff yeah. action or Southern Lehigh. Handoff, first man through. We'll hold everything. I think that was Jason Bell, but uh, Bobby Stem does run people in and out of that position from time to time. Gain of a couple of yards on the play. And I think that was Bell who was the ball carrier. We're going to have one messy night here by the end of the evening. Guy. That middle of the field is really, really going to be dug up. And as the night progresses, of course, it makes it that much more difficult to pick out numbers. As we are looking at a third and six, 5.05 to go in the first period. No score. Back to throw. Kendra, big third down. He lobs it up, and it's inter intercepted, I believe. No, it's dropped. Sean Fogarty was there, had it in his hands, couldn't hold on to the football. The pass intended for Jim Brady. And Brady had the ball overthrown, had no shot at catching the ball. Another look. Looking forward to seeing uh, Kendra in this situation, guy with that quarterback draw. Of course, with his running yardage this year. Here he just floats along a little bit too long. Drayton is back to receive the punt of Dan Kendra. Drayton always a threat to go all the way. He's standing at about his own 18 yard line. It's a low punt, the kind you normally can return. Out. However, it hits the dirt and skids a little bit. Drayton runs away from it. It'll be whistled dead on the Central Catholic 12-yard line. That's a punt of 41 yards. We talked to Jim Morgans, too, about some of the keys to his ball club winning tonight's game. This is what he told us. Uh, the keys to the, tonight's game uh, are, uh, you know, definitely who takes care of the ball, especially with this kind of weather. And, uh, you know, who can match the intensity level and uh, who can keep it, the intensity level, up for 48 minutes. Well, we can, right, Dick? Oh, yeah. All right. yeah. We're ready to go. We're good for 50 minutes. No injuries. We're ready to fly. We have a whistle. We have a flag, our first flag of the ball game. And uh, that usually is against the offense unless somebody uh, steps across the line of scrimmage or lines up offsides. And that would be uh, Dick's favorite word, encroachment. And that's and going to be the call, Dick. And the Hawks did, so it's going to be first and five. Central and two possessions really not coming away with any kind of field position whatsoever. So, boy, that five certainly helps if you're going to start to kick out a first down series. So instead of starting the drive on the 12, they get a, the advantage of starting it on the 17-yard line. Handoff, first man through. And that's Safogarty, who is... Fumble. Moving him up and down, a fumble on the play, and I believe Central Catholic has it. That is the initial signal. Fogarty on the bottom of the pile. He may have come up with his own fumble recovery. Fogarty with a good, strong run gets the ball up to the 34-yard line. That's a gain of 17 yards. 
Sean Fogarty, Ryan Seagreaves, Harold Faircloth, they don't have the big size, Gary, but boy, they play. Fogarty, Fogarty's amazed us all year. Pretty good running right there. And then through the heart of the Becca defense. Remember those numbers, Becca first in, pass, in uh, ground rushing. 593 yards out of that fullback position this year. Fogarty and Volpe, Fran Volpe has done real well in that position too. Here comes Delgado around the outside. He'll cut back and again down the sidelines. He doesn't want to step out of bounds, Dick, as he keeps stays inbounds, keeps the clock going. He's over central territory into Becca territory and uh, I think he's being told not to do any jawing down there. Another look. I'll tell you, Gary, this is the kind of play that, that make, uh, in this case, the Hawks cringe a little bit. He should have been hit five different times, end up with a loss. Instead, the talent that Delgado has, I, it's, it's amazing the way he got around the corner and it was able to juke a little bit down there, too. The ball right on the 50-yard line, the second first down of the game by Central Catholic. They're moving the ball for the first time tonight. 3.25 to go in the first period. And Tim Cramsey, the big quarterback, 6'3", 210-pound senior, will reset Rashawn Drayton, put him in motion. Leaves only his fullback in the backfield. Cramsey's going to throw for the first time. Lobs the ball in the vicinity of Delgado. And the uh, pass is overthrown. Coverage on the play by Mike Tachi. Tachi really did a good blanket job that time on Delgado. Cramsey decided, since it was a quick little out pattern guy, that there's only one receiver. Uh, very wise, really, to almost throw it away there. The clock stops with the incomplete pass. The first incompletion of the night by Cramsey as he throws his first pass of the night. 3.09, second and 10 from the 50. Out wide to the left side, Damian Coleman, number 18. Coleman, a favorite target for Cramsey. In motion is Delgado. Inside handoff to Drayton. Drayton finds room up the middle. He stays on his feet and fools his way down inside the 45, down to about the 43-yard line. A gain of seven yards. It's going to bring up a big third and three. Normally you have, uh, you know, one back with the, with the big numbers, Gary. But as you said, the fullback's about five and a half. You have uh, two, uh, two halfbacks the way of Drayton, as we see him in action here, and uh, Delgado. And you just get magical numbers. And, you know, people keep saying, well, gee, Cramsey's numbers are down. That's because all the other three numbers are up. That's correct. When you can run the ball the way Central has run it this year, they haven't had to pass all that much. Third and three. Big third down play. I don't think they're in four down territory yet, so they're looking to get the first down right here. It's going to be Cramsey rolling. He's getting rushed. Cramsey slips oh. and falls all the way back to the 46-yard line. A loss of 11 on the play, and Central's going to have to punt it away. I don't have her number, but I know Mother Nature was the one who made that stop, Gary. First of all, the defender falls down putting the good rush on him. You'll see him here. Sort of has him cornered. He slips. Cramsey gets a reprieve, and then he goes down as he's aiming the pass. So that was Mother Nature made that tackle, You huh? bet. You know her size and weight? Well, she didn't have to. You know, she <laughs> just struck him down from her rears. From the 46-yard line, it'll be central to punt the ball away. That means Jimmy Grohler is standing back. He gets another low snap. This one he handles. He gets the punt off. It's a high one that Kendra will lose. The ball is loose. Central may be on it. It looks like number 44. Mike Saramelli has the fumble recovery. Dick Becker came into the ball game fumbling the ball twice per game. They have fumbled it here. 1.9 to be exact, Gary, so they're over their average. We got a flag. We got the yellow hanky. Second fumble of the game by Becca. Recovered by Central on both occasions, and we'll hold everything until we see the flag. It's going to be a penalty against Central. Big, big penalty. It's uh, interference, I guess, with the ability to catch the football. So we'll take another look at this one on replay, Dick. Big call. They're still trying to sort this one out, Gary. Becca will get the football, Dick, right where the fumble occurred. And that means they'll have it first and 10 on the 32-yard line. The only thing I'm trying to figure out, Gary, is, is they know it's a muff, but they call an interference with a catch anyhow, so that, you're going to mark it there. So we'll take another look at it here and see if Kendra was interfered with his ability to catch the football. Oh, I don't know. It first was almost I simultaneous, I but... Uh, that was the call, an interference with his ability to catch the football. In fact, maybe we want to re-rack that one up again and take another look at it. Now Glenn's waltzing them all back. Well, this may be a 
15-yard walk off yeah, against Central. They still go the other way. Take them punt the ball again. Yeah. All right, here it is again. Now this is a boy. I don't know, Dick. Boy, that's making something good out of something bad, huh? It'll be a 15-yard walk off against Central. They'll have to punt the ball again. Their first penalty of the night. Lose the ball, get 15 from the line of scrimmage, and punt over. And that means that Jimmy Grower will have to stand back on his own 17-yard line, the line of scrimmage to 31. Well, you look back on plays like this for the significance. Dick, that turns out to be about a 60-yard penalty. <laughs> That's right. And you lose possession of the football. And don't even get the football. Sarah Melly had, fall, had fallen on the football for Central. The fumble disallowed interference with Kendra's ability to catch the ball. Good snap. Thrower holds the ball high, gets the punt off. Again, it's dropped at the 40-yard line. <laughs> this time, Flaherty. the football is Flaherty, and Flaherty slips and falls. Otherwise, he may have the sideline as he gets into Central Catholic territory right at the 50-yard line. Boy, that is one slippery ball out there today. You'll see it here, Gary. Flaherty all along. Again, that, that little drop, that one split second, you hesitate. Boy, he had the corner and slip. Punt covered 29 yards. First and 10 for Becca at midfield. Keeping it, Kendra cutting up inside, nice move. Kendra got around Ryan Ritter. Kendra finally gets knocked out of bounds. No, not out of bounds, they keep the clock going. Tackled on the play by Joe Nall. Gets the ball down to the 36-yard line, a pickup of 14 yards and a first down. Here's the option we talk about, and Kendra does this so well. He is so strong, Gary. Alaranda Cunningham, he try, hurdles a man, uh, a would-be tackler there, picks up first down, double-figure running. Difficult for anybody to come to a sudden stop. Joe Nall was there to make the tackle, but once Kendra cut up inside of him, there was nothing Nall could do to stop him. Inside of 40 seconds now, down to 34 seconds in the first quarter, no score. This time it's the fullback, and that's 33, Jason Bell, who gets down to the 31-yard line. He'll pick up five yards, tackled on the play by Ryan Ritter. It'll bring up a second and five. Boy, after that big Viking error there on the punt, uh, really, really giving life to the Becca offense here. Two, two plays have generated just about 17 yards. I don't know if Becca wants to run another play. I don't believe they will. They'll wait and let the clock run out, and we're going to have ourselves a scoreless first quarter of football. Nothing, nothing. We'll be back right after this timeout. On the gridiron, the diamonds for working out or lounging around. Suit up with the best. Russell Athletics, available at the expanded Bethlehem Sporting Goods. Bethlehem Sporting Goods, a Russell Athletics team specialist, carries a large selection of t-shirts, shorts, sweats, and more. Plus, Bethlehem Sporting Goods offers custom lettering, screening, and embroidery of Team Russell Athletic wear. And new this year, a dedicated team room where your team can choose from a huge selection of over 100 uniforms and samples. Bethlehem Sporting Goods, the team sport and trophy specialist. We're here today to talk to the transmission specialists at Allentown Transmissions. Hi, I'm Bob Seifer. If you're having trouble with your transmission, then it's time to stop by Allentown Transmissions. We don't have gimmicky low prices or the high overhead of a franchise shop, but we do offer nationwide warranties, fair prices, and honest transmission repairs done by professionals with over 30 years combined experience. Allentown Transmissions Union Boulevard. at home for the greatest hits of all time. Wake up with more music TV.
You are watching the Lehigh Valley's Company of Choice, Twin County Cable 4. Have Faust Construction build your dream house on your lot or one from Trio Farms Estates in Lower Nazareth or Beaver Run in Butchkill Township. You may also rent a luxury apartment at Schoolhouse Terrace in Nazareth. New construction, remodeling, or rentals. Call Faust Construction at 759-1595. Dick, so far, the offenses have been pretty well stymied. 35 yards rushing for Becca, 34 yards rushing for Central. Both teams have, not, have thrown the ball rarely. One for two for Becca for 27 yards. 0 for 1 for Central. And that one, of course, the big completion, that, you know, the element of surprise at the beginning of the game. But other than that, it's just been trench warfare. You're talking with teams that average nine touchdowns between them, Gary, offensively. I don't think either one thought they'd end that first quarter without a score. And, of course, the conditions of the field probably warning some of the plays that they can run. But right now, Becca has been driving. They're down to the Central Catholic 31-yard line. Bob Stem will ease his way off the field. Bobby doesn't have the best knees in the world. And Whoa, he's take a while. He slides and Kendra has the ball club ready to go. They just don't want 12 men on the field. <laughs> Here comes a quick pitch to Brandon. Brandon does a nice job staying on his feet as he works against the mud. And Brennan gets the ball down to about the 25, perhaps the 26-yard line. And he's going to be very close to a first down. Glenn Rismore giving the long look to see whether or not it is. It is not. We'll give him four yards on the carry. Pretty good call, Gary. Motion to the to the short side of the field. And, and, then, and then a pitch to follow the fullback who went in motion uh, to the short side. Made good yard. He's second down five, turned into third down one. Third and one. The ball on the 27-yard line. Kendra's made good use of the quarterback sneak this year, but he won't use it here. He'll give it to Bell. Bell barrels his way forward. Looks like he has enough for the first down. Runs into a whole host of Vikings. Led in, leading the tacklers was Todd Worley, number 65. And Glenn Rismiller will again give a long look across the sidelines. And he's going to call for a measurement. Gives us an opportunity to give you the Bethlehem Catholic offensive line. At center is 68, D.J. Chazar. The guards are 75, Mark Keeter, and 57, John Carpenter. The tackles are Bob Spatilla and 76, Matt Scheller. The tight end tonight, of course, is Pat Preshock, who's back in there for uh, the Golden Hawks. Central Catholic defensively looks like this as their defensive tackles are Jeremy Wells, number 60, and 65, Todd Worley. Defensive ends are Mark Lapidula, 61, and Jim Morgan, 66. Linebackers are Mike Saramelli, number 44. The other inside linebacker is Harold Faircloud, number 55. Ryan Ritter in there defensively. Ryan Seagreaves at corner with Nate Davidson also at the corner. The safeties are Jose Delgado, and the strong side safety is Sean Fogarty. Well, Richard, we've got ourselves a rather large fourth down call. You bet we do. And uh, you, you think with the power thrust of a Kendra, you know, that you'll simply follow DJ Chazar off the ball and find that hole somewhere, Gary, and get that first down. Again, you hate to, to put that excessive foot travel because of the conditions out there. Anything can happen when you're in this part of the field. It is just uh, grassless, and there is a great deal of mud in that area. So uh, we'll hold everything until the officials say we can start the clock. And Kendra now will run the play. He gives a quick pitch, and it's going to be a pass, and Kendra's going down. He's not. Oh, he stays not. on his feet. Oh, my, what a play by Dan Kendra. Kendra all the way down inside the five-yard line. Unbelievable. There they caught him relaxing a little bit. Central sort of came off just a little bit because they had Kendra Penn. Stem goes for the long bomb on fourth down. We get the handoff, and then the pitch back to Kendra. Kendra goes, and he has a man draped all over him. And I think right there, Central just relaxed just a little bit defensively. Kendra breaks it again with that size and is able to make a monster, monster gain and a scoring situation for the Hawks. Kendra picks up 24 yards on the run. An amazing play by the big kid, this junior quarterback. Kendra, who is 6'1", 205 pounds, just refused to go down and makes a great, great play from the two-yard line. First and goal to go for the Golden Hawks. 
putting his head down. Is he in the end zone? No signal yet. I think it was Bell who was the ball carrier. Gain of about a yard. The ball will be down to the one-yard line. You know, the surprising thing, Gary, about that run, uh, one of the really sure tacklers, Sean Fogarty, was, was a guy who was number 32, was draped all over Kendra. I'm certainly not faulting uh, Fogarty because I, I thought he should have gotten support at that time. Bob Stem with a, one of his unique calls, Dick, yep. that he very oh, yeah. often well, you expect it. successfully, and it turns out to be extremely successful. It didn't look that way at the beginning. Kendra again looks over the D. And now we have a whistle, we have a flag, and boy, that would be a big one if it's delay of game. And it is. Delay of game against Beckel. Bring it back to the six yard line. Second penalty against the Hawks for 10 yards. You don't want that, you want that quarterback come there and check those defenses out, you know, and read them, but boy, sometimes you worry. The play comes in from the bench in the person of Jim Brady, as Brady replaces Tachi. Brady will go in the slot. Flores is in the backfield. Kendra looking, looking. Kendra's going down. 66 is in there to make the tackle, and that is Jimmy Morgan's 5'11", 220-pound junior. Jimmy Morgan has signaled out Jimmy Morgan as one of his outstanding defensive players, and we see it here. Little fake reverse, Gary. Central played it extremely well. Kendra had to step up, and when he did, there was Morgan's to meet him. This Loss time we put the lock, and it's a little bit different. Lo Loss of six takes the ball back to the 12-yard line. Nine minutes to go here in the first half. Big play for the Golden Hawks. They're looking at a third and goal to go from the 12. Back to throw, straight drop back. Firing over the middle is intercepted. With room guard. Fair cloud, I believe. Down the sideline. He could oh. go all the way. Oh my, what a play. Touchdown. Well, Number 65, Todd Worley. Turn, turn about his fair play, Gary. Kendra shook a tackler under his romp toward the end zone. And wouldn't you know, he does the very same thing. We'll see it here. That's good defense. They smelled the screen all the way. Now watch him step. Here Kendra lunges and he figures he has the lock. Somehow Worley just shakes him. 88 right yard off. reception. Todd Worley on the interception. 88 yards for the touchdown. Boy, you, I this must be Halloween Eve. You're knocking, you're knocking at the gate down there at the other end, Gary, just waiting to push it in. Get set back on two plays of a big third and fourth left. Next thing you know, it's in the other end zone. Amazing. We've got a timeout called down on the field. This is a chance to talk to you about Pam's Candy Factory. When you step into Pam's Candy Factory, the aroma alone will make you glad you came. Not only are chocolates being made there, but fresh cream and butter fudge. Pam's also has a variety of sugar-free and low-sodium chocolates Good and man. candy. Pam's Candy Factory, located on the corner of 24th and Forest Streets in Wilson, is open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Stop in at Pam's for only the very best of homemade candies. That's Pam's Candy Factory. Again, Becca High looking at a third and goal to go from the 12-yard line. Dan Kendra threw the ball over the middle, trying to throw one of those short passes on a delay pattern across the middle. Todd Worley, the 6'2", 245-pound junior, came across to grab it, and then Dick showed uh, some pretty good speed for a 245-pounder. We knew he'd be tough to bring down. I guess you needed a rope and a lasso. Well, it was that wide receiver screen, uh, the one that so many people are going to, Gary, uh, originally at the college level, and everybody going to it, and it, was, it seemed like it was a little bunched, and the defense just played it so well. So at the 8.33 mark, where it looked like Becca was going to get on the board first, it is Central that gets on the board first. And Central now will attempt the extra point. Coming in to kick it is Kozak, Brian Kozak, number 80. The kick is up. And the kick is no good. With 8.33 to go in the first half, it's Central Catholic 6, Bethlehem Catholic nothing. Stay with us. We'll be back.
Power Sporting Goods offers the area's finest selection of athletic supplies and equipment. We're known for being the number one team equipment specialist and in providing you with only the best in custom uniforms, sporting goods supplies, athletic footwear, and custom high school jackets for any area high school. We feature the most complete line of baseball equipment and athletic medical supplies, plus expert screen printing provided on the premises. Don't settle for second best. Get your booster club businesses and little leagues into all-star sporting goods at 1222 Main Street, Northampton. Smart shoppers know for quality and value, Quakertown Farmer's Market is the place to go. Choose from a wide variety of fruits and vegetables fresh from the farm. Give into our mouth-watering baked goods or take home our country fresh meats. Visit our gigantic indoor-outdoor flea market with dozens of dealers and thousands of collectibles and hard-to-find items. With over 150 bargain-filled specialty stores under one roof, you're sure to find what you're looking for at Quakertown Farmer's Market. Get ready to numb your senses. The biggest pay-per-view concert of the year. You two in concert, Zuropa, from Sydney, Australia, Saturday, November 27th. Their only American tour date is in your living room. Uncut, unedited, their first full-length TV concert ever. You two, direct from Australia. You two, only on pay-per-view. Catch the sounds at home on pay-per-view. You are always invited to come out to the Westgate Mall and shop at your favorite community stores. See another great baseball card show from November 12th through November 14th. That's this weekend. And check out the Christmas craft extravaganza starting on November 15th. On November 20th, Santa's arriving at 11 a.m. All this and more at the Westgate Mall on Shanersville Road in Bethlehem. Gift certificates are available daily at the Westgate Mall office. Gary, what a turnabout of events. You know, Central could have easily been down in the dumps because they figure, you know, they're, they're, they're locked way back when they get the arm lock on, on Kendra. Couldn't bring him down. Now you have Becca knocking on the door with the first down at the four-yard line. And all of a sudden, coast to coast the other way. Talk about an ebb and flow. It all happened in one sequence. As it looked like Becca was going to get on the board first, did not happen. And Central does get on the board first. R.J. Robbins is in to kick the ball off. He'll kick the ball to Flaherty, who's in the middle. Again, they keep it away. The ball is loose. I think Becca had already touched it, and the ball will be down at about the 29-yard line where Becca will get it first and 10 as they trail for the first time tonight. When you have sloppy footing, Gary, those, those are the elements that you just don't, you can't put it into a game plan. You know, if you're on offense, there's nowhere to put it. And if you're on defense, you just can't anticipate situations like that. And sloppy footing is what the rule is more than uh, the norm tonight. And I, I think, I really think it's affecting both offenses. Becca I mean, has turned the ball over twice, Dick, and one time it was taken back with a penalty. So the turnovers have hurt them so far this evening. Rob Flores comes out into the slot area. As Kendra's going to drop straight back and slide and run the quarterback draw. Kendra is knocked down at about the 32-yard line. He'll pick up about three yards on the play. Second and seven. You know, you just can't totally credit the defenses, Gary, because you have teams coming in here again that are scoring nine touchdowns between them, and, and midway through the second quarter, you know, it's scoreless. And for them to come up with a touchdown, wouldn't you know the first touchdown is a defensive touchdown? Tachi will bring the play in from the bench, and that means that Jimmy Flaherty will come out. And Dick, they were kind of put in the position with that delay of game penalty that, yep, that kept that really them away hurt. from a play from the one-yard line. A little fake oh. and spin, and how about that tackle? That's Coming Fogarty. up with Sean Fogarty. Played so smartly, Gary. You know, you, you think in a game of this proportion, of this immensity, that, you know, they're over-aggressive. It happened to Michael Brooks today from Florida State on, on the flanker reverse. You know, you're so aggressive, you want to come in on all the action. And Fogarty just stayed home, and he played that perfectly. Didn't fall for the fake at all. So the loss back to the 28-yard line will bring up a third and 11 as the clock continues to run at 6.56 to go in the first half. And another big call here for Becca High as they look at a huge third down play. And we'll see if Kendra wants to put it up. Kendra Keats running the option. Gets rid of the ball to Brandon. Brandon has the corner. Brandon has the first down, I think. It depends on the spot. Whoa. There goes Frank D'Angelo. Frank spots it as Sarah Melly knocked Brandon out of bounds. 
And Dick, it's a matter of where, where he slid, I guess, where he put his foot down. Well, we're going to see it shortly, Gary. I tell you, this is a pretty nice straight arm by Brandon. Uh, not that he jars the tackler, Gary, but he keeps him off him for that extra yard that is first down significance. Dick, do you think uh, D'Angelo spotted it with his right cheek or his left cheek? Yeah, look at him now. He plays for Cat. He's wearing brown and white. What he did do was give them a first down. That's first down number five for Central. And again, if you're watching the yardage for Brandon, he now has 29 yards in the game. Becca keeps the football first and 10 on their own 39-yard line. It's the deep back. Brandon, good cut. And Brandon is grabbed and thrown down by number nine, Ryan Ritter. But he makes a good cut on a tough field to make that kind of cut. Gets the ball up to the 47-yard line. It'll be a gain of seven yards, and we'll call it second and three. Gary, you called it perfectly. Hits the line of scrimmage, all clogged up. Slides outside, and that's where he makes the eight yards. Ball in the 46. Not much of an air game so far tonight, but a pass that was intercepted has proven to be the most decisive of plays. Brandon, again, the ball carrier. He's tackled on the play by Ryan Ritter. Ritter's been involved in a number of defensive plays tonight. Gain of a yard by Brandon, and now Becca looks at a third and two. That's two critical open field tackles uh, that have been made, you know, off misdirection stuff of the Hawks. We had it on the other side with Fogarty. Now we have it over here with Ritter one and one. Ball on the 48. Good crowd on hand here, considering the weather. They had hoped for about 15,000 here tonight. I don't think we quite got that many, but there is a lot of a lot of people are here with their umbrellas up, and it's really turned out to be a rather comfortable night if you take away the slippery conditions down on the field. Brandon has the first down. He gets the ball to midfield, and in fact, into central territory of the 49. Give Brandon three, first down number six. If anything, Gary, conditions have improved. You know, you're looking for a second half after a little chalk talk that will we'll get the pass offenses in gear a little bit and perk this weather up. Brandon now with 40 yards on the season, 932 yards rushing. Bob Stem talking to Dan Kendra. The father down along the sidelines. He was part of that last Central Catholic undefeated team back in 1982. Well, that's a pretty nice defensive play right there, Gary. Brandon carried the ball and uh, Todd Worley, no I game. And Worley made the hit. <laughs> he wants he wants to add to his prime time after the return. Worley with a touchdown on an 88-yard gallop. He was a runaway truck. Nobody could bring him down after intercepting a pass. Well, they had their shot. He was just a determined young man going down that far sideline. I wonder if Todd Worley has ever scored a high school touchdown before. Second and ten. Kendra looking. Lots of time. No more time. Gets rid of the ball. Does a nice job of staying on his feet. Getting rid of the football. And a catch downfield by Jason Bell. Stayed Takes in the pocket and under immense pressure gets it off. Bell had already fallen, but makes the makes the reception, gets the Hawks out of a would-be hole, and gets them into a third and four situation. And it was a gain of six, as Dick mentioned. Two for four in the passing department for 33 yards and an interception now for Kendra. The ball on the 43-yard line. They have to get to the 39-yard line. 3.22 to go. In the first half, 6-0 Central Catholic. Quick pitch to Brandon. Brandon follows his blocks and gets to the outside, has the first down. Dick, a great block by Jimmy Brady. Excellent block by Brady. You know, wide receivers there are being called on more and more than to just run their patterns. Brady gives them the block, quick pitch, outside, boom, first down, Becca. Nice drive going here. First down, number seven. The ball will be placed down at the 36-yard line. First and 10 for the Golden Hawks. This drive started on the Bethlehem Catholic 29. This is the 10th play of this drive. Brandon, no, Kendra keeps it. Kendra sideline pattern, and it is broken up. Pass intended for Flores. Coming up to make the hit on the football was Nate Davidson. Real good defense that time. 
Red to receiver, watch the quarterback. Quarterback picked one target. That target is Flores. Narrows the distance. You'll see it here. This is good defensive play. Gives his man room, picks out one target. Fake us out. Good defense. Good fake too, Dick. Excellent. Our camera people don't usually get faked out, but they were that time as it was a good fake by Kendra to his running back, and then he stepped back to throw the football. Fox stop, 305. Kendra, option. Kendra to Brandon. Brandon to the outside. Oh my, what a play by Harold Faircloud. What do we say? Pound for pound. Those young guys do a little bit. Of, that flag's been there for about a half hour, Gary. Really. They must be waiting for a critical point in the game. I don't know if they're going to wipe the ball or what, but I was wondering about that object lying out there for a while now. No gain on the play. It's going to bring up a third and ten. Dick, are they in four down territory at this point in this first half? 2.25 yeah, that, to go. That's Bob Stem coaching. All right. <laughs> you got your answer. No doubt about it. The I formation by Becca. Back to throw, Kendra. Looking. Good drop back. Five steps. The pass is caught. Getting hit is Jimmy Brady. Brady is close to a first down. Again, it depends on the mark. And Becca wants a timeout as they see 2.10 on the clock. And we'll show you the replay, and then we'll see what the situation's going to be. Jimmy Brady, 11 catches coming in. 274 yards and an amazing 24.6 a catch. He did a great job of shielding the ball right there. Well, we're going to have a measurement. We've got a timeout. We've got a 6-0 central lead. Becco on the move. 2-10 to go. First half. Hi, I'm George Atia, president of the Wow Outlet Store. Here at the Wow Outlet, we carry top quality brand name sportswear at 30 to 70 percent below retail every day. This season, you'll find big league names such as Russell Athletic, Chalkline, Adidas, Reebok, and much, much more. At Wow, we have something for everyone, with infant sizes to adult 6 extra large. For the best savings in the Lehigh Valley, stop by the Wow Outlet. You know, the biggest single thing in the car business is you need to build trust and confidence. People need to feel comfortable where they do business. And with long-term employees, we feel we have a great advantage here. When people come back and see the same faces two, three years down the road after they've purchased their car, that's very important. Many of our service people have been here over 10 years. At Scott, our people are caring, professional, friendly, and very knowledgeable. And I think that says to customers, we'll take good care of you. Stabler Arena on Sunday, December 5th for two shows. Tickets at Stabler Arena box office and all Ticketmaster outlets. You are watching the Lehigh Valley's Company of Choice. Twin County Cable 4. Well, the numbers haven't changed at all. It is 6 nothing, 2-10 on the clock. But it is going to be a fourth and inches Dick, they're stopped just about four inches shy of a first down. That was a close measurement. You're absolutely right. Now, last time they had this short stuff, they went to that pitch, the handoff, and then the pitch back in the quarterback throw. And there you get a... I don't think we've shown replays of measurements before, <laughs> but we're giving you a replay of the measurement. And there's Glenn Rissler telling you exactly how far. He's talking to Bob Stem there. It's the length of a finger and a thumb, Dick, in case you were interested. Kendra keeps it. Kendra has the first down. Inside the 25-yard line. First down, number eight. As Mel Allen used to say, the length of an ash of a White Owl cigar. 87 yards rushing now for Becca High. As the ball will be placed down at the 24-yard line. Becca sees the clock just like you do. Two minutes to go in the first half. They have used, I think, only one timeout. Kendra keeps it, keeps his footing. And again, steps out of the tackle of Ryan Ritter, but Ritter is 
able to at least slow him down so the Faircloud can come over and put Danny Kendra down. Kendra is inside the 20, down to about the 17 yard line. Kendra's going to get six yards on that carry and bring up a second and four. It's Becca who, who is uh, logging the offensive statistics now, Gary. From the 17, handoff, Brandon. And Brandon goes down hard as he's inside the 15, down to about the 14 yard line. And he's going to be very close to another Becca first down. Glenn Rissmiller says, well, it is going to be third down, but a timeout by Becca. And while we have a timeout down on the field, it gives us a chance to talk to you about another one of our fine sponsors, TV Associates. They opened their doors 41 years ago. That's when Dick opened his door, as a matter of fact. Their home for the last 20 years is on the corner of 5th and Pershing Streets in Fullerton. Some people call it Whitehall. TV Associates is owned and operated by Terry Pugh. Terry would like to invite you in to see their all-new projection TV and VCR department. TV Associates has prompt, courteous service, trained technicians who offer 24-hour service and estimates given before the work is done. TV Associates, 5th Street and Pershing Boulevard in Fullerton, just a few streets behind the Lehigh Valley Mall. I waved him never, every day, Gary. He never invites me in. <laughs> Would you go? Oh, yeah. All yep. right. Do my business with Terry. What a drive by Becca, the 16th play of this drive, starting on the 29-yard line. Three, three ones up there on the clock, Gary. One, 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 which is certainly plenty of time for the Hawks to operate from this distance. Third and a yard from the 14. Another opportunity for Bob to call the big play if he wants to do that. He doesn't. He gives it to Brandon. Brandon, I think, has the first down. His forward movement will get him the first down as he's tackled on the play by Mark Lapidula along with 66 Jim Morgans. And again, we'll have timeout called by the officials. I think they want another measurement, Gary. That helps Becca Dick. Stops oh, absolutely. the clock. Let's him call play. And this, I think, is our... Uh, fifth measurement of the game. Well, it's three, three in succession. That's, they even measured during the timeout. And I think Beck has been short on every measurement, and I think they're short again. Five change, five links. Wow. Only this time it's fourth down. You don't have one to play with, right? Fourth down and the clock to worry about. It's inside of a minute. The last time it was Kendra off tackle, uh, between guard and tackle on the quarterback sneak. And certainly it's your, your easiest way of transportation right now. Bob Stem doesn't want to take any time calling the play, so he was out there calling it while the sticks were being moved to the sidelines. They'll start the clock now. And now they'll get a first down and try to call a timeout. Kendra has the first down and a couple yards more. And now they'll stop the clock to move the sticks. And maybe Becca will call a timeout here. Same spot he got it last time, Gary. Chose to sneak, no handling, and of course with his power and his drive, it really became no contest. Ball down to the 13-yard line. First down number nine for Becca. Got to think air here, Gary, now with under, uh, well, just around 40 seconds. There's pitch. Brandon. He's going to get knocked out of bounds. That's good that for... The Golden Hawks, that stops the clock. Tackle made on the play by Nate Davidson. And the officials will mark the football at about the 10-yard line, I believe. And this is where we always ask our sideline cameraman to help us out a little bit here at J. Bernie Crumb. Uh, the ball's on the 5-yard line. Of course, the very positive thing for the Hawks beside the yardage was the ability to get outside that out of bounds mark and stop that clock with a magic three dozen on it. Boy, someone submarine did a nice job. Make sure we get that number. Now Becca will stop the clock with 30 seconds to go. And we'll call timeout. We'll be back.
Make Whitehall Auto Parts the most important stop for your car. We're a major supplier of farm and domestic auto and light truck parts and have one of the largest inventories in the Lehigh Valley. We also provide machine shop services, which are equipped for complete engine rebuilding. Whitehall Auto Parts stands behind their products. Make, Make your first stop at Whitehall Auto Parts. Open weekdays 8 to 8, Saturday 8 to 4, and Sunday 9 to 4, or phone 437-4604. Gus's Crossroads Inn invites you and your family to sample the all-new dinner specials. Treat yourself to a selection of mouth-watering seafood or fresh-cut made-to-order steaks. And don't forget the daily happy hour with Greek hors d'oeuvres, Monday through Friday, 5 to 7 p.m. Gus and Eleni provide only the finest Greek wines, home-baked breads and pastries, and the Valley's best-tasting Greek foods. That's Gus's Crossroads Inn and Family Restaurant off Route 378 Bethlehem. Open seven days for lunch and dinner. Aristotle said that a man is who he is in relationship to other men. It is a democracy. You can't do it. It might have been in history class, or English, or maybe science. But somewhere along the way, there was one teacher who made you feel very special. Wouldn't it be nice if there was some way to say thank you? The Walt Disney Company presents the American Teacher Awards live from the Walt Disney World Resort during the Disney Channel's free preview. Ball's on the five-yard line, third and three for the Golden Hawks. 30 seconds on the clock. The rain continues to fall. Everybody under the umbrella, but nobody uh, has headed towards the gate. This has been a good, good football game. The only score, an 88-yard interception run by Todd Worley. Becca High had the ball down to the 12-yard line, tried to delay pattern over the middle. Worley stepped in front and then rumbled. And he did rumble at 245 pounds down the field. I think I guess he was even too big to slip. <laughs> Gary, you know, we're going to see a great imbalance in the statistics at halftime, uh, especially when you measure up and say, wow, the score. You want to talk about imbalances? Central Catholics run 10 plays That's in this half. About. That's the one. When they look at that plays run. Becca, this is their 20th play of this drive. Brandon to the That's outside. Room. Does he have the corner? Oh, he took a hit. Coming up to make the hit, I believe, was 23 Nate Davidson. Oh, my, what a hit because Brandon thought he had the corner. Uh, he is awfully close to that corner post, let me tell you. Now they can get a first down, so we'll hold everything as they're going to spot the ball at the two, I believe, or the three. Boy, they love their left side. They'll spot it at... Going to spot it at about the three-yard line, and it's going to be a fourth and one from the three. Clock is stopped on the out of bounds. Do we have a touchdown? Some of the backup people feel we do. The officials don't think so, but they do have the first down. First down. Again, you're gonna have to set those chains, Gary. Not really set the chains, but mark it with the with the yard marker, so it's gonna hold the clock a little bit. We're at 22. From the Kendra one the yard sneak. line. Has to be the sneak. Snake Kendra, I don't know. Any signal? No signal yet. Clock continues to run. You see the clock. It's a touchdown, Kendra. Eleven seconds on the clock. Kendra on an unbelievable 22-play drive. Watch Another this. look. Everybody in the park knows it's quarterback sneak, Gary. I guess he's run three in a row. Must have run six in the drive. Big One delay on the whistle. John Carpenter, Dick, was pushing forward, moving that central defense back a little bit. Tommy Harper in. It's good. Central, or central trails by Becca now by a 7-6 to six score. Well, certainly the Hawks deserve that one, Gary. You're talking a play that, what, consumed 22 plays in, in one series, one segment. Uh, Kendra not only quarterback that he led it. Brandon, of course, was there with some nifty running outside, but Kendra ran all the crucial ones as we see on the touchdown right here. Leg drive. That time, no left, no right, just follow up the middle with Chazov. And Tom Harper with the extra point puts Becca up by a 7-6 score. 
I doubt if they put this one deep, Gary. I don't think they give a Drayton, a Delgado, or people like that uh, the opportunity to return a long one. What a first half of football. Becca has absolutely dominated time of possession. Central just has not had the ball. They've only had the ball two times. The kickoff is low, and it is picked up at about the 18-yard line. And getting to the outside is Drayton. Drayton tries to keep from going out of bounds. He takes a hit and gives a hit. Mm. Two that seconds. Ate up, that hit up nine seconds, Gary. And that has... Uh, made the sidelines a little angry at the central side of the field. I'll tell you, the guys that have been in the trenches aren't doing any pushing and shoving at anybody. They're ready to come out on the field. I'm not worried about pushing and shoving. I worry about maintaining my balance out there. It's been a hard-fought, clean, tough football game so far. Well, time for one Cramsey bomb, huh? Well, I don't know. If he starts the clock, we won't get a play. No, it was out of bounds, right? All right. Okay, he was out of bounds, so it'll be First and 10 from the 37-yard line. Maybe he goes to Coleman over here with Flores in single coverage. Dick, it's been a long time since they've run an offensive play. Stop and go. The horn goes off, and Cramsey loses the football, but that will end the first half. Big pile up down there. I'm not sure if there was a fumble, but we'll call it a half. It's been a good one. Becca 7, Central 6. We'll put the numbers together and be right back. I remember my mom going to Walter's Pharmacy. Now I go. Walter's fills my prescription needs quickly, and I pay my Bell of PA and UGI bills. When I can't get away, Walter's comes to me with free delivery. Walter's Pharmacy, making life easier through genuine care since 1937. Walter's Pharmacy, 401 North 17th Street in the Allentown Medical Center. Introducing the new 1994 Acura Integra Sports Coupe and Sports Sedan. Not since Hot Wheels, the car's been this fun. Track sold separately. Come test drive the new Integra at your local Acura dealer. 100 years, the Allentown YWCA has been a vital community resource for women and their families. Annually serving over 17,000 individuals, the YWCA is committed to providing a variety of programs and services for people of all ages. Regardless of one's ability or disability, our organization offers a program especially for you. Our child care before and after school programs, youth development, and fitness classes enable us to offer something for everyone at the Allentown YWCA. We are back, and we don't want you to think we're starting a brand new ball game here. <laughs> Becca High has gone into the locker room and completely changed their uniforms. They've gone from their white ones to their gold ones. They've gotten rid of all the mud, I guess. And uh, ah, what's a laundry bill, Dick? Oh, nothing at all. That's number 60, Gary Cortner in the middle. Uh, As if I'd mentioned something, young man's facing back surgery. Bill Vanny. Oh, Bill Vanny, nose guard. Dick, let's take a look at the halftime stats, and you will be shocked by these numbers. Unbelievable. These are unreal. I add that up, Gary, to 152 to 34, and that relates to the very bottom figure, 40 offensive plays to 11. Where's the Central offense? They haven't had time to show it. You know, you're talking about two possessions? The last play you saw by Central to end the half was the only play they ran offensively in the second quarter. Yeah, and that, that was simply desperation running out the clock. However... They were the first to get on the board, and they did it with an 88-yard interception of a pass by defensive tackle Todd Worley, and he rumbled down the field to get Central on the board. They missed their extra point. They led 6-0. That touchdown came at the 8.33 mark of the second period. Then Becca High put together an unbelievable drive. 22 plays, took the clock from 8.33 down to 11 seconds. The final yard by Danny Kendra 
Tommy Harper did get the extra point, and that means that Becca High is on top by a seven to six score. Our second half is brought to you by Rarick Dodge. The Dodge Dakota is the roomiest mid-sized pickup on the market today. And you can find a great selection of Dakotas at Rarick Dodge in Bath. The Dodge Dakota is available in both two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive models, regular cabs and club cabs, with a choice of four-cylinder, six-cylinder, or eight-cylinder engines. Select the Dodge Dakota pickup. That's right for you at Rarick Dodge, located just minutes north of Route 22 on Route 512 in Bath for a clean deal. Come to Bath, come to Rarick Dodge. Dick, let's talk about some of the keys here in the second half of action. Bob Stem said to us that he could win this game tonight if he controls the football. He certainly did that for the first 24 minutes. He did it in the second quarter, Gary, with, with a patented textbook drive, utilizing the quarterback with what, she, what appears he does the best, and that's his running game, uh, the quarterback sneak, uh, the, the hands off the tackle with his tailback stuff. It, it was a typical Ohio State drive in that second quarter. But you talk about controlling the ball, and it simply belonged to him there. Joe Milani has the ball on the tee. He'll kick it off. It'll be an end-over-end -end kick that will be taken on the run by Rashawn Drayton. Drayton has the ball at the 18-yard line, and he'll cut it up inside, and Drayton will give Central pretty good field position. It looks like they're going to get the football at about their own 35-yard line, first and 10 for the Vikings. Boy, the difference in the game, Gary, uh, a bit ironic that Coach Stem has been shopping for kickers all year long, and yet the difference right now is Harper's foot. Dick, I would think that this would be a pretty critical possession for Central. They haven't had the ball in such a long period of time. They haven't really done too much with it offensively. I think they need to get a little offensive confidence, and this is a good time to get it. First and 10 for the Vikings from their own 34-yard line is where they'll mark it. Drayton is in motion. He comes our way. The handoff goes to Delgado. He has not had too many opportunities to do too much tonight. He does get the ball out to the 45. Looks like he got himself a first down, a gain of 11 yards. What makes it so critical, uh, Gary, is the fact that they haven't established anything offensively. You know, the air game, what was it, 0 for 1? And that was simply desperation as we see Delgado. An interesting point that was brought up of all places at the, at the chop shop this morning. You, you know, nothing ever interesting happens there. But it was brought up by a couple central people that Delgado has a knack for early in the third quarter to somehow giving the Vikes the impetus they need to throw a bid stall. That one, that he, one was a he big... He did just that against Easton. Dick 71 came out, yards. Went 71 for the touchdown from the 46-yard line. Delgado, by the way, 27 yards tonight as he also is looking to go over 1,000. We've got a penalty flag, and this is in the area, perhaps, of pass interference. So we'll hold everything right here and see what the call is. It was only the second attempted pass by Central in the game. And it is going to be a holding call against the defense. And let's take another look, Dick. There it is. Look for the hold. Well, it is pass interference, been, yeah. I think. It's interference. The signal is pass interference. No, there oh, hold. it is holding. Maybe they had their choice, Gary. Ten-yard penalty. That's the third for 30 yards against Becca. But did you see what that Delgado run did for Coach, uh, Coach Morgan's, Gary? Skirts a little bit, gets a little room, and immediately he's able to use Cramsey in, in a way we haven't seen him in this game. That is first down number four, second in a row by Central. Handoff goes to Delgado. Delgado this time is stacked up as he just barely gets back to the line of scrimmage if he got back at all. And we see making the tackle was number 19, Pat Kreshock. Haven't called his name yet tonight. And Dick, there's going to be a loss of a yard on that one. It, what a vast difference we're seeing in the defense. Is Central coming up with big one-on-one -on -one hits for stops, and yet Becca playing that swarming defense where four or five guys go to the ball. Passing situation for Cramsey at the 10-23 mark third period. Cramsey looking at a second and 11. Coming at us is Delgado. They're going to throw the ball. Looking over the middle, that's covered. So they go to the tight end, and he breaks away from some would-be tacklers. That's Joe Nall. And look at Nall go. Oh, my, what a run by Joe Nall as he gets the ball inside the 30. Down to the 29-yard line. A gain of 16 yards on sheer power and effort. He's a little excited. If we had a pick, a kid who has come more with his talents this year, Gary, Nall would be right up there. I mean, he starts as just 
a, a no-namer, and now all of a sudden you see him defensively as a whiz, and what a play he came up with there. I thought that was Bob Fatsinger from last year. Nice job by Cramsey, too. He was not his initial right. target, and he picked him out and found him with a football, and all a 200-pounder would not go down. First and 10 from the 29-yard line, Central on the move. We said it was a big series. I think we're going to get offsides against Becca. It looked like they may have jumped across the line. They were sort of drawn over by the movement by Drayton. But Drayton, what he did, appeared to be legal. What Becca did would be illegal. Offsides against the Golden Hawks. When you brought out that, that Cramsey uh, good move, Gary, uh, I think it's even more glorified when you think it was a short drop. And yet he had time, or took the time, to look off one receiver and go to a second one, his tight end over the middle. Ball goes to the 24-yard line, where it will be a first and five for the Vikings. Double wing set, as they often do. In the backfield is Delgado, or Fogarty it is, and there's a pass quick out thrown to Damian Coleman. And Coleman slips down at about the 19-yard line. He looks like he's close to a first down. He needed five, and he got five, says Glenn Rissmiller. First down number six. Really, guy, that was almost like a bonus. The five-yard penalty gives them first and five. You got one to play with, and Cramsey is just heady enough. If that play is covered, hey, throw it into the fence. Get rid of it. But he led them nicely, and they got the first down. First catch by Coleman on the night. He's six foot, 185 pounds. I think he always looks much taller out there in his uniform than six feet. And he's going to come out wide to the right side. And he looks about uh, six two from up here. <laughs> I can't imagine that he's only a six footer. Cramsey gives the ball to Delgado. Delgado is nailed as he crosses the line of scrimmage. He does look like he picked up a couple of yards on the play before being knocked down. And Dick, I'm wondering, uh, the change of uniforms a psychological ploy, or is it just a matter of getting some dry, clean uniforms on the players? What I think, it, I don't know what it was cement to do, guy, but I think what it did is got the crowd into the game. They were more psyched about it than anybody else. Didn't Notre Dame do that? Uh, they came out with a green. Yeah, and then got a, killed. That was didn't they lose that ball game? Win. Hey, I yeah, I didn't think oh, you'd remember that one, on. would you? Not if it was a loss. No yeah. way would I remember if it was a loss. Always dishonest when we talk <laughs> about the Irish. Back to oh, throw nice is crazy. Looking, looking. Great protection. He's gone into the end zone. Damian Coleman off his fingertips. You know what? That, that was a great play by Coleman. He realized that that out of bounds was coming up quickly, Gary, and there's no way he's going to retain it. And yet he does a, just a super balancing act and couldn't control it. Good thing for the Vikes out of it is that Cramsey had all day to throw it. Pretty good throw, too. The pass is right on the hands of Coleman. As you said, Dick, Coleman had to be very concerned about where he came down with his feet. And he just cannot hang on to the football. See the real safety of that. A pass like that can't be intercepted. Bob Stem brings some more defensive backs into the ball game as he takes out Mark Heater, number 75, and a third and nine big play for the Vikings. Cramsey, straight five-step drop back. Cramsey fires, has a man in Coleman. Coleman does a hook pattern down inside the 10, down to the eight-yard line, and Coleman's going to be close to a first down. He's got it. He's got it. He's right. First and goal to go from the eight-yard line. Well, I guess the Vikes didn't like those 10 plays running the first half, Gary, so they're coming out winging just a little bit, and, and Cramsey's right at the head of the class right now. This, this may turn out to be the quarterback battle we anticipated anyhow. Big, big play as Coleman has come up big on this drive. As Central, Cramsey has completed three out of four passes. This is the eighth play of the drive. Delgado in motion. Handoff Drayton comes away from the motion, stays on his feet, and struggles forward to about the one-yard line. Good run in misdirection that time, going away from their motion, going away from their strength, coming on the short side. You'll see it here, and it's just a, a little, not a necktie, but on the collar stop, uh, stop that, that got him near the goal line, but made the stop without his going in. Second and goal to go from the one. The clock at 6.58, third period. Central trying to take the lead back. They led this ball game 6-0, lost the lead with 11 seconds to go in the first half, 7-6. And now a touchdown will put them back up on top. Cramsey, who is certainly capable of moving people himself with his size, gives it to Drayton. Drayton's in for the touchdown. I think the most surprising thing about that score, Guy, was the ease 
the ease with which he got into the end zone, uh, a play that they've certainly run before. Credit that, that drive to the coaches at the halftime work as we see the score here. Pretty easy. And mostly credit Cramsey with his generalship. Uh, you got a coach out in the field there. He is totally in charge in that huddle. There's a guy who helps on the goal oh. line stance, and that's Jack Griffin. He comes in when they're trying to get the ball into the end zone. Jack is six foot, 320 pounds. He is a senior. And he certainly helped Drayton find his way into the end zone. Big two-point conversion now by the Vikings, trying to go up by seven. Cramsey looking over the middle, has the two-point conversion. As coming up and catching the football is number 84, Joe Nall, and we'll show you another look. Joe Gall, Coleman, both came up big in the air game that, that Cramsey featured in this drive. Our director says let's call a timeout. 14-7, 639, third period. This is a great football game. We'll be back. Dad, will you come in with me? You can do it, Billy. Since 1897, Nazareth National Bank has provided friendly, personal service. Good morning, Mr. Hanson. For nearly a century, banking decisions have been made by people who live and work in your community. Today, we're proud to honor those same values and continue our personalized service. Thank you, Mr. Hanson. Nazareth National Bank, we keep the tradition of trust. The Lehigh Valley is going to the dogs. Hot dogs, that is. Yes, everybody's rushing into their nearby Potts Doggy Shop for America's best hot dog, covered with all their favorite stuff. So don't be left behind. Get your pups moving to the Potts where you live or work. Fight the one you love. Fight the one you love. I need a hero fast and strong. But people tell me all the heroes are gone. I've heard of a place where the heroes play. It's usually impossible to save the day. I still believe in heroes. Well, oh, tell me there's no heroes anymore. I still believe in heroes. heroes. Prism. If you haven't seen us lately, you haven't seen us. Call now and receive two free 76ers tickets. You are watching the Lehigh Valley's Company of Choice, Twin County Cable 4. Sounds like a few festivities going on down in the truck. Yeah, they still celebrate in Halloween. That was three weeks ago. We do all the work and they have all the fun. I don't quite understand it. The drive, nine plays, 66 yards. The final yard, Rashawn Drayton. Cramsey certainly did the job in the air during that sequence. And here is the kickoff, and it's picked up at about the 16-yard line and down at the 31-yard line. And Becca High will put it in play first and 10, running the ball back with Jim Flaherty. Okay, one of the things we had looked for and had not yet seen it, although he was in on that kickoff, Brian Baker's appearance offensively for the Hawks. Uh, Brian coming back from that hand fracture, the, the thumb fracture and uh, seeing some duty last week. Nick, I want you to talk a little bit about Central's ability to come out That's always fired up in that third quarter, and we'll do it right after this play. Kendrick keeps the football and puts his head down and barrels forward for only about a yard, however, as he really got hit and hit hard, and it looked like Jim Morgans was the guy that was there to make the stick a gain of a yard, second and nine. Gary, what that appears to be is a combination of, of several things. And the big thing, of course, is focus. You know, you go in halftime and you're feeling sorry for yourself and you're adjusting tape and you're down. But these kids seem to listen to their coaches. So there they are going crazy on the blackboard or something like that. And these kids seem to focus on that. And the coaches are telling them, this is what to go. And then they go out and prove it. Well, they have proven it to us as they have been a great third quarter team. Here's the option to Brandon. And Brandon does a great job of sidestepping a couple of people. Then he gets double team where he can't sidestep anybody. Davidson on the bottom and Jeremy Wells on top. They do a great job of putting Brandon down a good, hard four yard run by Brandon. That was a good run, Gary, because uh, by all intent, he should have been stopped in the backfield. Played the option well. 
two little mini hits there, and how he makes yardage out of that is all an individual effort. Key sequence here, third and long. This is passing. And we can only give him three yards on the play instead of four, as it is a third and six. Brandon now on the night has 58 yards. Here comes the pitch, back to Bell. Bell tries to get to the outside and can't go anywhere. Tough defensive play by Jeremy Wells again. That, that call surprised me a little bit, Gary. They had, they, had, they had flanker and slot right wide, and Flores was one of them. And I, I thought certainly with the, with the down and yardage, they, were, they weren't disguising that as a run. They lose the three they picked up on the last play, and Becca's gonna have to punt the football for only the second time tonight. And that means Dan Kendra is in to kick it away, and Rashawn Drayton is deep to receive it. It's a high punt. Drayton will get it at about the 39-yard line where his knee will go down. A 30-yard punt by Kendra. First and 10 for Central from the 39. You keep, you know, every game you hear, Gary, you hear that old favorite momentum brought up, and it is amazing. The Hawks just controlled momentum entirely in the second quarter, even after that big setback of the interception. Now the Vikes come out and receive the kickoff here in the third. So so far, the, the momentum has all been all Viking with 4-1-4 to go. If the Vikings can move it down into the end zone again on this possession, they will have taken control, a stranglehold on momentum. Look at that drive by Delgado as he has close to a 10-yard run as they'll again look across the field to see if he made the first down. Boy, that's good effort. You know, you look at those sticks sometimes, Gary, and you're sort of glad it's not a first down. You look at that second and short, and you're saying to yourself, oh, boy, what an opportunity, almost like a free play, especially when, when your, your offense is hitting on cylinders. From the 49-yard line, they'll give him nine and a half, and it'll be second and a half a yard. It is a good time to throw the bomb if you're inclined to do it. Instead, they hand the ball to Drayton. Drayton has the first down. Drayton's into Becca High territory. He gets to the 45, a gain of six. Central starting to do the job on the ground, and Dick, they didn't have the opportunity to do that well, in the that, first that half. That was it. You know, we said they didn't establish the run, but it, I, I don't think it was by, because of ability. It's simply they didn't have the ball. Looking at that magic number, what were they outnumbered? Four to one on offensive plays run in the first half. If you're keeping track of Delgado, he has 940 yards rushing on the season. He needs another 60. From the 45-yard line, first and 10, Vikings. Hand off Delgado. Boy, he puts both hands over the ball, puts his head down, and he picks up five yards as he goes to the 40, second and five. All they seem to be doing, Gary, is trading tackles. Left tackle now, right tackle next time. Left tackle, you know, back and forth, running the, just Delgado and Drayton off those tackle slots and getting great yardage. Uh, normally, they would shift to that from a wing tee, but this time, they've just been doing it straight. At central offensive line, the center is Jeremy Gian Domenico. The guards are 66 Morgans and Wells. The tackles, Worley and Hogan. From the 40, second and five, perhaps an audible at the line of scrimmage, called by Cramsey. Cramsey will give the ball to Drayton. He'll wait for things to form, and then he'll try to cut up inside. Defensive end that time came across to make the tackle, and his number is completely obliterated. Gain of a couple. Gary, that's a great play by Drayton. I'll tell you why. He goes in motion, and he almost went too far, so he timed it so that he would be in the receiving end at the proper time. Tackle was made by Mike Tachi. I'll tell you, Frankie D'Angelo should have sneaked into that Becker room at halftime, got a change of uniform also, yeah. shouldn't he? <laughs> Tomorrow night, 5 o'clock, we'll have the Patriot League Girls Volley Women's Volleyball Championships from Grace Hall, Lehigh University. Same day coverage. We'll be taping it tomorrow afternoon. Bring it to you at 5 o'clock. Rashawn Drayton runs into his own man, bounces off him. Drayton may have the corner. He's looking to go. Cut up inside, and he's tackled. We may have a clip. You might have. Drayton, oh, extra flag. Dick, it looked like Drayton might have had the corner if he wouldn't have stopped. Instead, he was waiting for Coleman to throw a block for him, and Damian got himself caught in a situation where there wasn't much he could do except throw a clip. Well, Drayton paused almost to set up the block for Coleman, Gary, and when he did it, it forced Coleman to, to change his aspect of the blocking, and as a result, we're going to get that big 15-yarder. It'll be a 30-yard run for Drayton and then they'll bring 15 of it back this way, I think, for a clipping call, but we'll hold everything. And I wonder what that second flag was for. 
Well, if it's a personal foul tacked on, we could negate every yard that Drayton got on the play. Pat's taking a long walk. We have a clip. And that, I think, might be the only call. We have a live ball clip on them. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -huh. A clip and a personal foul will negate the penalties. The ball is going to come down to the nine-yard line. Personal foul against Becca. Let's watch the play develop. Second, We're going to get a good shot of it here, Gary. Second flag is a big one. Now, here's where Delgado does his pace to try and set up Coleman for the block. And he set him up for the clip. There's that flag. And after the play was a personal foul called against Becca. The ball's on the 12-yard line, first and 10 for Central. Handoff, Delgado inside the 10. Delgado squeezing the football, gets down to about the six-yard line. Looks like he got about six yards. Coach Stam alternating tackles now. Uh, Gary just trying to get something solid in there because Central has just owned that tackle slot on both sides of the ball. You know, Drayton and Delgado are, are doing such a good time of pacing themselves, getting to the line of scrimmage. They don't appear to be rushing it. From the six, second and four. Central obviously can get a first down at the two-yard line. Final minute of the third period. Handoff, Drayton, Drayton. And again, he doesn't go down on the first hit. We see Tachi on the bottom of the pile to make the tackle. And Drayton is close to a first down. Okay, I, I, I certainly know it's not that simple, and it isn't the scheme of thing, but they almost seem to be going left, right, left, right, left, right, and following that sequence up. It's Delgado to his left, it's Drayton to his right. They are alternating the running backs, that's for sure. Third and about a yard to go for a first down. Third and three yards to go for a touchdown. Final play probably of the third period. Delgado runs into Cramsey, and Cramsey goes down, and here comes a penalty flag. That too was a late flag, Gary. Think about the only thing I can imagine there would be a face mask. Well, it, it was in a vicinity where there wasn't any other action except the tackler and, and the man being tackled. It's personal foul face mask. Yep. That's the call. Boy, the penalty's hurting Becca. A clip by Central is negated by a personal foul by Becca. And now, a, a busted play, Dick, that would have brought up a fourth down situation is going to create a first down. Well, it might not. If the, if the face mask occurred at the five, half the distance will not, will not give them a first down. Take another look, see if you can see the face mask. You know what? There was a stun on. They got into Cramsey's arms. He wasn't able to make the fake. They it's have first. the first down. Gary, while we have a second, I, I hope I'm right on this. In clarifying that penalty, we see how close it is. Uh, they walk off the 15-yarder for the clip, and the reason they walk it off, because even though the other one's 15, it's half the distance. That's it. The period comes to a close. 14-7 Central, and they're knocking on the door of the Golden Hawks. As we leave you, we'll be back. Let's go get your gold. You know it's always been the best. Let's go get your gold. Yako hot dog is known worldwide. Let's go get Yako. The secret sauce is one of a kind. Yako's an Allentown tradition. You've had an automobile accident and you need the Fender Dentist now. Supreme Auto Body will tow your car from the scene of the accident back to Supreme. You'll get a free estimate of repairs by one of the staff of licensed auto appraisers. Supreme can also provide you immediately with a rental car while your car is being repaired. Supreme deals directly with all insurance companies to give you hassle-free service and a written warranty. The Supreme team is celebrating over 60 years of automotive excellence, 
and Supreme Auto Body is AAA approved. Trust your car to Mike Funzone, the Fender Dentist at Supreme Auto Body. It's big. It's bad. It's back. The NBA on TNT. The best schedule. The best analyst. No one rotated that. All-Star Weekend. More playoff games than anyone. Oh, he loves it. So when we say nobody plays the NBA like TNT, we mean nobody. No, oh, that's right. Yeah. We're back. Uh, we're chatting here because the quarter can't end on a defensive penalty. So we are still in the third quarter, although technically all the time has run out. And we have a touchdown. Touchdown, I think it was Drayton. Rashawn Drayton goes in from the two-yard line. Boy, what a workmanlike job at a Viking. Becker controls the second quarter. Central controls the third quarter. And that comes with 0, zero, zero on the clock. A free play with the penalty, and Drayton goes in from the two-yard line. A, an eight-play drive covering 61 yards, all of it on the ground. Ryan Kozak comes in to kick the extra point, holding is Ryan Seagreaves. Kozak missed his only other opportunity. He falls down, but does not miss this time. With 12 minutes exactly to play on the clock, a fourth period to go. Central is up their lead to 21 to seven. Stay with us. Not the yellow pad. Wait a minute. We're spending 90 bucks a month on life insurance, right? We need protection. Yeah, but Bob told me about Primerica Financial Services. They'll give us the same amount of coverage for, say, 35. That's 55 a month found money. I'll take it. Wait, it gets better. We're already putting away 45 a month, right? Add that to the 55, and look how our money can grow in 10 years. Wow. 20 years. That'll pay for Jill's college. 30 years. We can retire on that. Hey, how do you know all this? I called Primerica Financial Services for this free kit. It shows how to save on life insurance and how what you save can make you financially independent. They call it buy term and invest the difference. It's really just common sense. What's this? A free calculator. It shows how our money can grow to pay for college, retirement, whatever. So what are we waiting for? Put your money to work for a change. Call Primerica Financial Services. Tired of dining at the same place and staring at the same menu? Then travel on down the tracks to the Main Street Depot, Main and Lehigh Streets in Bethlehem. At the depot, you'll dine in an authentic Victorian railroad station on all your favorite meat and seafood specialties. Also, on selected evenings, there's entertainment in the piano lounge. The finest in wines and mixed drinks complement the meals at the depot. So for good food, fun, and entertainment, there's no place like the Main Street Depot. Call 868-7123 for reservations. MasterCard and Visa are gladly accepted. Well, Dick Tracy warned you that Central would come out of that locker room and play a great third period. Boy, have they done that. They've had two possessions. They've scored on both of them. Drives of 66 yards and 61 yards. Central leads it by a 21 to 7 score. We're going to have to start discussing the Eastern Conference picture in a moment, oh, Dick, no, because... <laughs> now, you can't avoid it, Dick. <laughs> we have Eastern Conference people with us here tonight, and they've tried to explain it to us. And what they tell us is that Becca may not have the opportunity to go Eastern Conference if they lose, they lose. this game tonight. Here's the kickoff, picked up by Brannon. And Brannon get out over the 30. Look, he won't go down either. Lee Brannon. Finally will get knocked down at about the 40-yard line. Tackle made by Nate Davidson. More and more we see people relaxing for one split second when you assume that guy is down. And I'll tell you, a lot of people have been burned. And unfortunately for the Hawks, uh, Brandon retreats a little bit on this. Again, it looks like it's not even going to be handled, Barry. Right there, they're hitting the bounce off. If Becca, we are told by people from Berwick, does not win this ball game, there are teams 
ranked ahead of them. They tell us eight in the Eastern Conference, and therefore maybe they would not get the opportunity. So if that's the case, they would play Central again next week. This pass intended for Brady is overthrown. Coverage on the play by Sean Fogarty. It just goes as an incomplete pass. Dick, much like Central, who had one play in the second quarter of football, Becca, in the third quarter of football, had three plays and a punt. Gary, this game could not be as logical as it sounds. First quarter, a draw. Nobody does anything offensively. Second quarter, all Becca. Third quarter, all Central. Does that mean six minutes of each in the fourth quarter? Becca hopes it means 12 minutes of Becca in the fourth quarter. Second and 10, the ball on the 40-yard line. Coming out wide to the right side is Rob Flores. Kendra, he's going to run the draw. It goes to Brandon. Brandon trying to get around and cannot get around. Sean Fogarty. Fogarty is there waiting for him. He puts Brandon down at the 44-yard line. A gain of four, third and six. Get a real good example in that run, Gary, of, of uh, being taken away from your skills by the condition of that middle of that field. Brandon wanted a cut, and he had ample room to cut. You know, open field, unable to do so because of the footing. Ball close to the 45-yard line, third and six. Brandon now over 950 yards. Brandon cuts up inside. Oh, my, Oof. does he get hit. Coming up to make the tackle, number 55, Harold Fairclough. And he put a shoulder into Mr. Brandon. Brandon picks up three. It's amazing when you study the Vike defense, Gary, that so many of the hits are individual hits. You know, it, it, it's not just one or two or downfield, but, but even right near the line of scrimmage, you get great individual hits. Fourth, or it's check it, yeah, it is fourth. Fourth and two. The ball on the 47-yard line. Big, big play for the Hawks. Brandon. Second, third effort, loses the football. Or did he? The ball marked at the 50, no sign that he lost the football, and it's gonna be a first down for Becca. Boy, give, give partial credit to Jerry Ferran, number 74, at right tackle. He really led the run, led the way for Brandon. That was a pretty good run, pretty good play for the Hawks. First, first down in the second half for Becca High. Ball at midfield, first and 10. 10-11 to go in the game. Becca down by two touchdowns and two extra points. All declarations will be made tomorrow at noon. That means there'll be a lot of post-game activity. Can't wait to read Monday morning's paper. Back to throw, Kendra looking, firing long, has a man, it's caught! Great what catch! A catch! What a catch! Catch is made by number 31, Jim Flaherty. That's Gary what's called a legitimate streak pattern. All the way down to the 10 yard line, a 40 yard pass. Boy, I'll tell you, credit Kendra for great accuracy. Credit Flaherty for a sensational catch. That, that's, that's just a great job. That pass was thrown so well, I'm not sure Flaherty could have dropped it if he wanted to. I think that's perfect, great play. On the numbers. I think it's first and goal to go. Brandon trying to find something, and he makes something out of nothing, and oh my, Ooh. there is a personal foul. Piling on, late hit. That'll take the ball down to the four yard line. A gain of two, tack on another four. Boy, you don't want to give that free yardage down in that territory. Game has been relatively penalty free, except for some really big penalties. And against Central, that will be their third penalty for 34 yards. There is the piling on. Jimmy Flaherty's unique story, Gary. A uh, Southern Lehigh lad came to Becca, went to Southern and came back to Becca. Uh, and really, this has been his first real part of the football program, a real speedster. Worked his way into the defensive uh, unit, and now, and now certainly a wide receiver unit, on the wide receiving unit. Becca can get a first down about six inches from the goal line. Brandon is going to go down on a good tackle by Sarah Melli. He came in and grabbed him around the ankles, and that's about the only thing that can put him down. He hit him high, he does not go down. And he gets little or no yardage on the play. It stays on the four, and it's gonna be third, and about three and a half for a first down. 
Again, in a very critical situation, Gary, uh, down near the goal line, you see a great one-on-one -on -one hit. And that shows you how close to the goal line Becca would be if they got a first down without a touchdown. Rob Flores goes out wide to the left side. Kendra fumbles the ball. Becco's going to look at a fourth and three, maybe four, as the ball lost back to the five, a loss of a yard. He was going to try that sneak over his own left side again and, and just fumbled in the process, but enough gold around to recover for the Hawks. How big is this call? As it comes in from Bob Stem, Jason Bell brings the play in from the bench. He replaces Mike Tachi. That's where they have to get to get the first down. They'd love to get to the orange marker for the touchdown. Mike Trombetta giving you that shot down on the sideline. Exactly eight minutes to go. Kendra back to throw, looking. It's tipped away, intended for Brandon. Making the tip was Ryan Ritter. Boy, that, that was a great defensive gem. That, again, the individual effort showing through. I, I think that man was open, too. Looking for Brandon. The tip, the deflection. Central deep, deep, deep in their own territory, Gary. Watch those linebackers. Beck is going to look for a turnover here, Dick. Try to you strip bet. that ball away and get it back. 7.53 to go. Central 21. Becca 7. Central victory. They'll go 11-0. They will have themselves an East Penn Conference championship. Cramsey gives the ball off. I believe Delgado. Well, that looked like a pretty clean shirt for that to be Delgado. Gary, coach came in on that play. You notice when the Wrights owned the clock in the third quarter, you had so much slant stuff. Here, you want to avoid the slant with the blitz and linebacker, so you go to the straight stuff, straight dive stuff after motion. And that was a clean shirt. That was Fran Volpe who carried the ball. He gained a couple of yards. Second and eight, the ball is on the seven yard line. There's the slant. Great the linebacker came. Runs away from a would-be tackler, and here comes a penalty flag. Drayton gets up, a little upset. Tackle made on the play by John Sakonic. And it's a personal foul face mask called against Becca. We'll see it here. They go with a slant play, and that gives linebackers an opportunity to be very, very active in a blitz situation. Make the good stop, but lose it with the penalty. And I think the face mask called against Kendra brings the ball up to the 35-yard line, a 15-yarder. Six penalties now for 53 yards against Becca. First down, number 10. Make it 11 for Central. From the 35, first and 10. Handoff, Delgado. Straight stuff. Bikes intent on eating up as much clock as possible, Gary. They figured the Hawks had a score in that last possession because you're ticking under seven right now, and the Bikes have at least two more plays, and who knows, maybe another first down. And that was Sean Fogarty, 32, not 22, who carried the football. As the ball is on the 37 yard line. Or check at 28 yard line, it is. And there's Delgado as he gets the ball out over the 30 to about the 32. Pretty good second effort that time uh, by the runner. And uh, this is a critical play coming up both ways. Third and short, short meaning less than three. There have not been many games this year where Delgado in the fourth period has been held to 46 yards rushing. 68 yards rushing for Brannon. So unless something uh, dramatic happens, it does not appear either runner is going to get 100 yards, nor does it appear they'll get their 1,000 yards here tonight. Delgado puts his head down. Here oh, comes another slide. flag. That one came from Pat Garamone. That one came so high, I thought there was that parachute is coming in on the holy field and, and <laughs> bow fight. Delgado was the ball carrier, and the penalty is going to be against Central. They're going to decline this stick because it's going to bring up a fourth, fourth, fourth down. Fourth down, right. 
hold is the call. Well, we said it was Pat Garamone's flag, so that would be the call. <laughs> Be nice, Gary. On the 23rd, I got to speak in front of these guys, oh, the officials. Right. So don't get me in any more trouble. Central's going to have to punt the ball away as they come up a yard shy of the first down. This is their first punt of the second half. Defense! 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 Central punter is Jimmy Grower, standing back on his 20-yard line. Bikes are coming. Excuse me, the Hawks are coming. Kendra back on the 40. Roller, it's low. Easy one to return from the 42. Kendra jumps over, around, goes through a couple of people before Ryan Seagreaves puts him down. As Kendra gets the ball into Central Catholic territory at the 46-yard line, the punt, it covered 25 yards. What is that old worn-out cliche? We'll see it here with reckless abandonment. Usually quarterbacks worry more about their health, Gary. First and 10 for the Golden Hawks on the Central Catholic 41-yard line, and they're going to have to get it into the end zone quickly and get the ball back if they're going to win this game tonight. Kendra, he goes down. Good, tough play coming up from his linebacker position was Harold Faircloud. He's played a great game tonight, Dick. Oh, hasn't he ever? You know, some of those unsung guys, Gary. Jeremy Wells, we keep hearing that one. Faircloud, uh, Joe Gnall. Uh, Sarah Mealy, you just hear some great individual efforts defensively. From the 39, again at two, second and eight. George Curry, right to my left, been writing all night long, feels he may play at least one and perhaps both of these teams at some point. Back to throw, Kendra, that's the way he loves to throw the ball. And I think that one That's should have been incomplete. caught. Yep, that one's incomplete. That was a perfect throw, and Flory stretched out his body and couldn't come up with a catch. Kendra, four for ten for 82 yards. Who we'll catches Gary coming up with a double replay here? Straight drop, no fake. Prime receiver doesn't look anyone off. Catchable ball, hit perfectly in the inside. Again. I think if he makes this catch, he's got another 10 yards to you run bet. before he hits a green and gold uniform. Clock stopped at 4.16. Penalty flags are thrown, and the hanky stick have uh, been kind of important. They have. Yet. They have. And I'll tell you guys, under the circumstances, uh, this is such a meaningful game. I, I think the officiating crew has done a great job. They really have. They've shown, you know, they, they say normally the best the best sign of official is no sight at all. You know, but these guys have been visible, and yet I think they've done the job. They've certainly been on top of everything. Seventh penalty for 58 yards against Becca. Moves it back to the 44-yard line. They look at a third and 13. It's been a game in the trenches tonight. Back to throw. Kendra fires, sideline. Good coverage, however. The pass was intended, I believe, for Flaherty. The coverage on the play by Joe Nall. And that's a difficult one for us to figure out. That was either thrown before he makes his break or, or the receiver extended his route too long. And it was Bell. Jason Bell, who was the intended receiver, 33, not 31. Again, the mud is taking care of the gold uniforms, too. There's Flaherty back in the lineup now. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if they go to him. He has speed to burn. He's going to go wide left, Gary. In fact, they're going double wide left. He and Brady. Maybe a last gasp here for Becca High as they look at a fourth and 13. Kendra slips, slides. Sideline pattern. Incomplete coverage by Coleman. Pass intended for Jimmy Flaherty. The Vikings take over on down. Well, the Vikings get themselves about two, three first downs if possible, Gary, to consult this thing. From the 45 yard line, Central will get the football, and their only concern, Dick, is four minutes and three seconds. Yeah, but you can look up and, and, and see that little cushion 
you know, and then know that the ball's in your corner for at least three plays. Two entirely contrasting halves of football tonight. Becca High dominated offensively in the first half, but only led by a 7-6 score. They only scored by Central on a defensive play. And Central came out of the locker room, and they have controlled the football here in the second half. No gain on that play, second and 10. And again, it was their prime effort in that third quarter. You know, it, you just love halftime when the coaches can, can really stress things are important. You know, they, I think there, Gary, is where you see the efforts of the spotters, the guy upstairs, the really unsung guys who aren't even noticed, not even sometimes not even known as a, members of the staff, you know, your scouting crew and things like that. And you never know if it's an X and O adjustment or a mental adjustment, and you just psychologically get the team ready to play a little tougher half of football. Cramsey. Well, here comes another yellow flag. Cramsey put his head down and got inside the 50 into Becca territory to about the 48-yard line. Cramsey got about seven yards, but we'll hold everything and, again, keep our eye on Glenn Rissmiller. Like strolling back, Gary. Well, he's talking to Becca. Glenn says that's an illegal block. Blocking below the waist, and that's a 15-yarder. Takes the ball back to the 33-yard line. Fourth penalty for 49 yards against Central. Well, of course, it's a big deficit for, for the Vikes guy, but what it does, it gives them one more play, and that's one more time to, to really milk that clock. And it's the 33-yard line. They're looking at a second and 22 from the 33. Have to get the ball to the Becca 45. There's the shovel pass we talked there about. Was. And it worked very nicely as Drayton takes the ball and gets it up to about the 45-yard line. Boy, that, that picked up a, a lot of quick yardage. And I think it came completely as a surprise. Four for six on the night now for Cramsey. And the gain to the 45 is a pickup of 11 yards, so his yardage total, 42. And Central looks at a third and 10. Great knocked out of bounds, stops the clock at 245. Cramsey. Has a man open, and he is separated from the football. Damian Coleman bobbled it, but had a good shot at catching it on the uh, rebound, and Flaherty came up and knocked the ball away. Good defensive play by Jimmy. The timing on, on this hit is, is really significant because that's the thing that really jars it loose and takes the completion away. Passing situation, Cramsey goes to it, to his favorite receiver, Flaherty right there to put the emphasis on with the hit. Rollers in the punt. Becca sends a couple of guys back to receive the punt. So Grohler punts away, but not far enough away. Has a wall. As Kendra has it, got it at the 33, and is he upended as Nate Davidson comes up to make the tackle. The punt, 23 yards. Boy, Becca loves to feel that punt on the run and get that running start. First and 10 for the Hawks from their own, or the central 47-yard line. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Becca will fill the air with footballs, I would think. 2.19 to go, clock is started. Well, nothing has been cleared up except we believe the Vikings will certainly be in a District 11 championship game next Saturday night. Can't imagine that uh, they would opt to go Eastern Conference when one win will put them into put state them in the playoff States. action. You know, it, it appears, Gary, that when you look at the unblemished, undefeated teams, you think districts, you know, because you're thinking almost automatic berth if you cop it. And if you have a couple blemishes on, on your record, then you look the other way. And Becca may not have an opportunity to do anything but go district. We've got an interception. Yep. The ball is caught by Jose Delgado. That young man is a football player, oh. Richard. Oh, what a force he was in that third quarter. Second interception of the night by the Vikings. One of them went for an 88-yard touchdown. Another look. This is a pretty good reception. He jumps pretty high to get that ball. Yep. Ball's on the 30-yard line. 
You'll we'll see it here. Vikes are playing this whiteout situation. Uh, Becca tonight is like the double to one side. Central has to run off a minute and 35 seconds. They give it to Delgado. Delgado can't cut, can't stop. He'll go down at the a line of scrimmage. Kendra comes up to make the tackle. Well, the Hawks looking for a miracle here, Gary. What's the old adage? Uh, you have a 14-point play somewhere in the last minute and a half? Well, if the Hawks can't go Eastern Conference, we'll have a rematch of these two football teams next Saturday night right here at J. Bernie Crum. And Dick, I think we'd see a very interesting, different game if the field is dry and the conditions are a little better. And boy, do they know each other so much the better now. Second and 10 from the 30 inside of a minute. Drayton. Drayton with a good run. He didn't want to go out of bounds, I don't think, but he does get the ball up over the 45, up to the 46-yard line. Rashawn with 16 yards on the carry. Well, it gets that big first down, which gives the Vikes at least three more offensive plays, 48 seconds. It's just about the end of the game, guys. The Berwick crew has left us, and their final words, we've got two pretty good football yep. teams here. Yeah, they were impressed. A lot of the kids came down. Of course, I never hear the there. words pretty good when you talk about Berwick. <laughs> pretty good no, isn't good enough actually. when you talk about Berwick. The dogs, Dick, the dogs. The dogs. The dogs are trying to get a game with Becca High next year in the regular season. Well, they're short one. Delgado, he just doesn't want to fumble. Tucks the ball inside his gut, and he doesn't care as long as he stays inbounds, as long as the clock continues to run. He'll lose a couple of yards. That doesn't matter much. There are the uh, Berwick guys leaving. You know, Gary, the, the Vikes are going to come up with an undefeated East Penn Conference championship. And, and I think with the Eastons and the Beckers and the Liberties, I think that's quite a tribute. Undefeated East Penn Conference champion. 11 and 0, they will go. 11 and 0. The Vikings are your East Penn Conference champions. Easton, if they knock off Phillipsburg in second place, and the Becca High Golden Hawks will end up in third place with losses only to Easton and the Central Catholic. And a good, good, hard-fought football game tonight. Becca High with a tremendous first half doing what they wanted to do, keep the ball away from the Vikings. The Vikings would not have any of that in the second half as they controlled the football. The first two times they got the ball, they went nine plays, 66 yards, eight plays, 61 yards, and they win this game tonight by a 21 to seven score. And Dick, it certainly would create a very interesting matchup if these two would go at it again we'll next it again. week. And I think, Gary, uh, the most assertive thing I think you saw here tonight was the Vikes' ability to establish their strength. And their strength has been that running game from tackle to tackle. Uh, Delgado and Drayton certainly didn't come up to monster numbers, but oh, what a monster third quarter. And then the fourth quarter when they needed the ball control, they got it, all with the running game. They certainly did that. The touchdowns tonight scored on an 88-yard interception by Todd Worley. He put the Vikings up 6-0. Becca came back as Dan Kendra went a yard on a sneak on a, in a very impressive 22-play drive that covered 71 yards. And then the third period belonged to the Vikings. Rashawn Drayton on a yard run where they mixed the pass and the run so well in a nine-play drive, four passes, five runs. Cramsey to uh, Joe Nall for the uh, very important two-point extra point to go up 14-7 and at the 6.39 mark. And then with no time left on the clock to end period number three, Rashawn Drayton went the final two yards, as we said, on an eight-play 61-yard drive. Brian Kozak with the extra point. 21-7 is the final score. A big congratulations to Jim Morgans and his Central Catholic Vikings for an undefeated regular season here in 1993. Bob Stem, of course, with his 105 victories at Becca High, uh, certainly had himself another great season as they end the regular season 9-2. and two. And we only can wait to see exactly what these two teams will do to finish the 1993 season as uh, District's Eastern Conference and states possibly await the Vikings and maybe even Becca High. There you have it. Final score tonight, Central 21, Becca High 7.
for Dick Tracy. We thank him for his usual terrific job after going through a Notre Dame game today. He still had enough energy to get us through this one. Rick Gio has been our director. Our crew in the rain one more time did a fabulous job. They were slipping and sliding along the sidelines too. Mike Trombetta deserves a big pat on the back. The gang in the truck did their usual fine job despite having a great deal of fun. So for everybody, we thank you for watching. I'm Gary Laubach. We'll see you next time right here on Cable 4 Sports.